The story for Killer is Dead follows Mondo, an executioner who is a person who gets paid for killing monsters, criminals, and assassins. He is a junior executioner but shows a lot of skill and promise until each of these missions start to end badly for Mondo because of the agitation of his cybernetic left arm, yes he has a cybernetic left arm, and a series of nightmares from a masked woman who he has no idea who she is. Hell, even his clients and targets start to show up in his own childhood memories, so Mondo grows determined to get some answers and find out what this means, because I don't know, I'll say it straight up, the story is a confusing mess, but it's also a very oddball and hilarious mess. There were so many moments where something over the top or downright strange would happen that made me burst into laughter. So while I was confused on where the story was going, I enjoyed where it did take me, even if I had no idea what was going on. Absolutely no idea. Overall, the story is fun and even has some endearing and funny characters, but it's extremely Japanese, which means it's extremely confusing to me. But now let's talk about the sound, which voice acting is a mix because you have some decent performances mixed with some really over the top and fun ones and some downright annoying ones like your assistant Mika in this game who is the most Japanese annoying character I've ever seen in a video game. Holy crap, she's so annoying. To be quite honest, the over the top performances work way more seeing that the dialogue is really over the top and ridiculous. The sound design is filled with sword slashing, squishy sounding deaths, and plenty of strange environmental sounds that fit the oddball world. The soundtrack has plenty of head banging heavy metal for the action sections, and some more quieter tunes for the other parts that aren't as chaotic. Overall the sound is good, but the voice acting could definitely be better and less annoying. Oh my god. But now let's talk about the graphics, which Killer is Dead has a cel shaded look that is very similar to Grasshopper's other killer game, Killer7. The style of the visuals can be straight up gorgeous at times, especially during the combat where the action is very smooth and the style never lifts. The finishing moves and even some of the standard attacks are really vibrant, fun to look at, and extremely violent, which I guess coincides with the fun, because I had fun watching blood geysers spew out of these demon creatures. It was fun. The environments are well varied, look fantastic, and are extremely strange in design. One of the first levels you go to is a candy land, and it's vibrant, beautiful, but really creepy. Oh man, it was unsettling. Characters are well modeled and animated, but the shading on them is easily the highlight. The shadows covering the faces of the characters gives off a noirish type look, which I loved, because I love noir. So overall, the graphics are gorgeous, creepy, and definitely fit the extremely strange story of the game. So there you go, the graphics are great. But now, let us talk about the gameplay, which Killer is Dead is mainly a hack and slash game. Mainly, I'll talk about that in a second. Mondo is equipped with a sword and his cybernetic arm which can turn into a bunch of different weapons like a drill, a gun, etc. Each level has you go from room to room, killing all the enemies, and await the next door to open so you can go and pretty much do it again until you get to the end of the level. This is where you will fight a boss. Almost every level has a boss for you to fight at the end. The combat is actually very smooth and responsive and a lot of fun to dish out carnage. Which is good because, uh, hey, I love dishing out some carnage. You can use both your sword and your cybernetic arm and you can actually mix them together and create some really cool combos. Mondo also has a dodge button which can be used to counter attack an enemy and dish out a large amount of rapid fire slashes. And you even have finishers which are both brutal and rewarding. Rewarding because you'll get extra gems from doing a specific one. You get gems from killing enemies normally as well. There are gems for your health which will increase your health or actually upgrade your health. Upgrades, which is pretty self-explanatory, and one's called Blood, which fuels your cybernetic arm's special abilities like the gun, the drill, etc. While you collect these gems, you will start to level up your health and blood meters, which make them bigger, like I said. You can also use the upgrade gems to buy more combos or strengthen ones you already have. While the gameplay is nothing special, it is entertaining to lay waste to a bunch of monsters while leading up to a boss battle, which aren't the best out there, but are still quite a bit of fun. Now besides the main story, you also have a bunch of side missions that you can complete. A lot of them are just challenges that are based on levels that you just completed that will give you extra money and gems. Now hold on, what is the money for exactly? Well, 
It's to buy presents from the gift shop. Why do you need presents? For the ladies, of course. This leads into the other quote unquote big part of the game, the gigolo missions. The gigolo missions. Gigolo missions. Yeah, just let that sink in for a second. Mondo goes out on a date with a girl, and while she's not looking at you, you're supposed to look at both her breasts and her undercarriage, if you catch my drift. When you do this, you'll gain points, and if you reach a thousand, then you can give her a present you bought. You keep doing this until time runs out, you have no more presents, or you fill the love meter, which then completes the minigame. When you succeed at a gigolo mission, you gain new weapons for your cybernetic arm. So it's kind of a big deal to play these missions if you want all of the weapons available. This mode is absolutely ridiculous, a little bit sexist, which doesn't really bother me too much, but it also gets kind of boring after a while, which does bother me. Just staring at vagina and boobs for 10 minutes while this girl says a bunch of repetitive stuff isn't really all that fun to me. Well, I, I mean, in real life it sounds kind of fun, but in, in a video game, no. But besides that, this game is tons of chaotic fun. Sure, the game is really short, it's about 5, maybe 6 hours long, but it's still an energetic and insane blast all the way throughout the story mode. I recommend trying Killer is Dead out if you want a good time and not much else. It's fun, definitely go check it out. There you go, there's my review for Killer is Dead, I hope you enjoyed it, thank you and goodbye.